It has been 16 months since the United States pulled out of Afghanistan, what the U.S.'s top military officer called a strategic defeat. This month, a new film documents the U.S. withdrawal, the Afghan forces left to fight on their own, and the chaotic conclusion to 20 years of war. Nick Schifrin sat down with a filmmaker and one of his central characters. The U.S. called it a retrograde, the military leaving Afghanistan after two decades of war. We covered the final days of the U.S. presence, as well as the deadly and disorderly evacuation. But the new National Geographic documentary film, Retrograde, takes us inside the rooms of disappointed U.S. soldiers, frustrated Afghan soldiers, many of whom struggled for their country until the last moment, and the heartbreaking evacuation from Kabul. The filmmaker is Oscar-nominated and Emmy-winning Matthew Heineman, and one of the main subjects of the film is former Afghan General Sami Sadat, and both join me now. Thank you very much. Welcome, both of you, to the news hour. Matt, let me start with you. Uh, I know that you started this film expecting it to be one thing uh, about U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. It became uh, something a little bit more complex than that. In the end, what story do you think you told about the end of the U.S.'s longest war? You know, I think we had a front row seat to the final eight months of the war, first through the eyes of the Green Beret team that we were with, and then ultimately through uh, General Sadat and his men up until the final days at the airport. Um, it's really a portrait of these final eight months um, in an attempt to try to humanize an issue that has been so relegated to stats and to headlines. And so, Sammy, do you feel like the film allowed you and, and your men to be humanized and the efforts that you guys made up until the last moments? Yes, Nick. Um, I think two things are very clear in, uh, in the film. One is the bond between the United States and Afghan militaries. For 20 years, we have been working together, trying to bond, work together, train together, and fight together. The second one is really shows the struggle of the Afghan soldiers up to the last bullet. And this defies the very statement. Uh, often politicians say the Afghan army didn't fight. We fought, and we fought very hard. We paid a lot of sacrifices. But there is so much an army can do when the political masters uh, go on the other side. Hmm. Let me show a clip. The moment when U.S. soldiers were told that they had to leave Afghanistan, starting with the Green Berets blowing up their own ammunition. Fire. all computers in accordance with JGBO disposition instructions. Uh, expend all loose and non-factory packed ammunition. No ammunition hand over to partner forces is authorized. Man. Sorry. Yep. You're good. You hear some of the frustration there. Matt Heineman, how frustrated were the U.S. soldiers that they had to leave? I mean, I think deeply. They, obviously, they're not allowed to uh, verbalize that. And in some ways, you know, their faces speak more than any interview could ever speak. You know, they, they developed this bond with their Afghan counterparts, in some cases over decades, um, in some cases over single deployment. Um, but there's definitely a sense of abandonment that they are leaving their Afghan brothers uh, to fight this fight alone. And Sammy Sadat, how abandoned did you, did your men feel? I think it begs the question, Nick, what happened to our non-major NATO alliance ship? We are responsible for some of the mistakes that happened on the ground, but there's other international partners, especially on the American side, who are also responsible, and we're asking for some accountability and transparency to come forward. We have handed over Afghanistan to the enemy, Taliban or the enemies, Nick. They are not only the enemies of Afghanistan, they are the number one enemy of America. They are giving refuge to Al-Qaeda. They have expanded the presence of ISIS because they can't control it. Sammy said, I'm going to stay with you because the responsibility does not only fall on the United States, of course. I want to show a scene in which you are on your cell phone with the Minister of Defense. And you describe how you put in orders for weapons in the morning, and those orders are canceled by the evening. Those are your men listening to you on the phone, talking to the minister there. And you tell the minister, I can't be fighting the administration and the Taliban at the same time. 
Were you fighting your own government and the Taliban at the same time? I was, Nick, and there is this uh, constant political fight with our capital, Kabul, for more assets and logistics, as other corps were also competing for it. The three things that constantly were held back were the combat logistics, which was handled by the United States. And because of COVID, so many things didn't arrive on time. The second thing was more non-combat logistics, which were authorized by our palace. And they were constantly uh, held back because of bureaucracy, because of corruption, because of other matters. And at times, it was really, really frustrating for us to um, fight on the ground and come back to the headquarter and only to get on the phone and fight again with uh, some bureaucrat in Kabul, especially like our top political leaders. They do have a responsibility. They, they have failed us too. And after the U.S. withdrawal, after the Afghan army was not able to withstand the Taliban, uh, and after President Ghani left the palace, we saw the evacuation, the chaos at the airport. Matt Heineman, you were back to document some of those scenes. Let me just show one of them. People were terrified. People were scared. It was absolutely chaotic. And no matter what, you know, side of the aisle you're on, no matter you know, your belief on the war, um, it was a really chaotic ending uh, to this longest war in U.S. history. And you know, I've, I've never actually cried while filming. And I constantly, you know, found myself just wiping tears down my face uh, as we were filming these scenes uh, of, of just sheer desperation. And you know, I, I hope that amongst many, many, many things, that you know, we seem to have forgotten this war. I hope that the film reinitiates a conversation around the war in Afghanistan and the people that we left behind, including the last image that you show, Matt, of of uh, a young woman. What do you see in her face? Trepidation, fear, strength, pleading with the U.S. military. You know, it's so easy as human beings, as Westerners, um, to disengage with these topics, to keep them at arm's length. And I feel like it's my job to, you know, get you to care a little bit more, feel a little bit more, and, and create a rational dialogue around these extremely complicated subjects that are often relegated to stats and headlines. And I hope that this film um, again, creates a conversation around uh, this final chapter of the longest war in U.S. history. Former Afghan General Sami Sadat, filmmaker Matthew Heineman. The film is retrograde. Thank you very much to you both. Thanks for having us.